you alluded to it earlier, um, but I've heard you say in other contexts that uh, there's a there's a kind of default assumption that our relationship with God is transactional, uh, and uh, people slip into that uh, type of dynamic with God pretty comfortably. And um, and uh, what what uh, God intends for our relationship is more transformational. And um, and you said. Uh, earlier uh, during this time together, all our previous steps come to fruition in our later years, that, that God is always preparing the way for us, right? And uh, and that's been striking to me, interacting with you over the course of the development of the book, that we are never not aging, which means we are never not uh, being transformed. And uh, so, um, yeah, I think uh, uh, maybe you could just... Uh, 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 lean, lean back into that idea that all our previous steps come to fruition in our later years. Um, how, uh, how does that dynamic play out that, that God is still leading us and yet we're seeing the fulfillment of, of our history? Well, your question brings out the melancholy in me. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. when I think of my previous years and the fruition I'm experiencing now in my senior years, I think of my failures. Um, I, I struggled with what I now know was chronic depression, but I wouldn't, they didn't name, I mean, Prozac wasn't even invented when I was depressed. Um, and that lasted for about 20 years. And then I, and I do, I feel like I was healed um, partly through counseling, but very little was available then. So, you know, it was, it was God's slow healing in my life. Um, and then I moved into my driven years and that didn't work either. <laughs> you know? So I think my driven years were probably my forties and my fifties. And I was on the church board. I was leading Bible studies. And if you needed a meal, I'd fix you a meal, even though I figured out about 10 years ago, I could retire from cooking. So <laughs> that's, um, so I think by the time I hit my 60s and 70s and, and I got into spiritual formation and spiritual direction, I realized that it wasn't that those were bad things and I didn't bring depression on myself. That wasn't my fault. But God was just inviting me to lean back into his love apart from my successes or failures. And I've been very taken lately with the verse in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 30, um, God waits to be gracious to us. And then the, about a couple of phrases later, blessed are those who wait for the Lord. And I thought, this is just really interesting. God's waiting for us to wait for him. And I guess that's kind of, that would, if I were writing the book now, I might include that. You know, <laughs> right. God has been waiting all my life for me to say, um, you know, here I am. I can't do everything, mm -hmm. but I can do the things that you've given me to do. And amazingly, the things you've given me to do are the things that I like best. I mean, from all my years, they're the things I like best. So I don't know if that's speaking to what you're describing, Dave, but that's what oh, comes to mind. That's great. And it's so interesting. Here I am is, is, uh, is uh, Samuel's uh, response right. to God. Uh, it's uh, Isaiah's response. To, this is, this is the call to the prophet, right? Like this is uh, part of part of our invitation to participate in in uh, the work of God in the world, and yet uh, um, and yet it's also an acknowledgement of um, our whole humanity and and our melancholy and the things that we carry with us, which works out great as a segue into our next conversation. Uh, which is inspired by Kelly's book, Holy Vulnerability. Uh, 